Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at taking a basic Revit stair and creating a ship's ladder from that. It's, it's quite simple, but we need to look at some code and apply some of that code to the basic stair that's within Revit so that what we get will be a, essentially a new type, which is the ship ladder. So that's great. Before we get into it, if at any point in this video you haven't learned something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Also, consider subscribing. And in the first link in the description below, you'll find a link to my free school community. I recommend that you join. It's free, obviously. And contribute to the community. It's great. I'll be there answering every question that comes in. Don't worry about that. Getting into it now. So I'm in just a basic project here. There's nothing special. And the first thing I want to do is go up to stair. We've got our basic options here, and this is just out of the template. And there's, again, nothing special about anything that we're looking here as far as the stair. I typically like to start with a seven inch max. This is just kind of their typical out of the box. Uh, we do have the ship ladder that I've kind of messed with already, but we're going to essentially make this from scratch. So let's go ahead and start with our basic stair. I'm not so worried about the level difference, the level change, anything like that, because every other piece of the stair is what really matters here. So I'll just draw this out as a straight run, and we can start looking at what this might look like with landings and everything later. So first of all, I finish that and it's done. It is just a basic stair. Again, it's that assembled stair. Everything that you might see within a typical stair, we've got the, the rails and guards, everything that comes with it. This is a pretty terrible looking stair and most likely you wouldn't want <laughs> this, but nonetheless, this is something that we get out of the box. So first of all, we need to take this and essentially duplicate this and start to edit this in a way that gives us ultimately what a ship ladder might be. And the ship ladder, if you're not aware, you have a very high rise over run. It just, the slope is very different. And it's typically more for like a storage, industrial, uh, accessing mezzanines. It's not quite the egress stair that we're all used to modeling and documenting. That's for sure. But there's, there's a piece of code that allows us to get around this if you're talking residential. So let's start by first taking this stair. I'll go to edit type and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to call this ship ladder. And for the sake of this video, because I have one, I'm going to call this two. But we will build this nonetheless. So first of all, you might think, oh, well, I need to start changing the calculation rules. And if you've ever messed with this, it's kind of a big headache and, and it's things that you don't want to have to mess with. And I don't recommend, but we don't have to for the sake of a ship's ladder. You don't need to. The calculation rules are kind of all the same. You don't really want to mess with those most of the time. That's a very specific use cases. But what we're messing with here and what we want to really pay attention to are these three parameters here. That would be the maximum riser height, the minimum tread depth, and the minimum run width. And all that's going to do is just really determine what we have to work with. And all of this is going to be based on the code. So let's go ahead and bring the code over here. And I've already pulled this up here. I'm, I'm looking at 2021. Obviously, this might change per year. So definitely look at it based on what you're trying to achieve. And so there's a couple things that we need to pay attention to. Obviously, I'm in the ship ladder section specifically, but it's basically it's saying that ship's ladder cannot be used for a means of egress. And the thing I want to point out here is the exception, and that's what's allowing us to actually use a ship ladder for a means of egress. And this is, again, a, the residential code, so that's important to be aware of, but it's for lofts mezzanines and similar areas that are at max 200 square feet. So that's really important, really important to be aware of before you get too deep into something where you're committing to a ship's ladder. Okay, that's great. Obviously, we meet those requirements. The other thing here that we need to be aware of is that the clear width at and below the handrails, which is obviously what clear width is, it cannot be less than 20 inches. So we're not working with the minimum 30, 36 inches that you would typically see with commercial stair or any sort of other egress stair. This is very different. So we have a little more flexibility with a width of only 20 inches. That's great. Then down here, this is really where most of the information that we're going to want to gather on a code standpoint is. So treads shall have a depth of not less than five inches. So that is telling me, I'm going to bring this back over here, minimum tread depth, if we look at this here, is currently set to 11 inches. And obviously this is for the, the basic stair that we duplicated, but clearly this is where our five inches needs to be. So the minimum tread depth. Obviously, we can't go below that. We're going to start receiving errors when it comes to creating the stair. So let's go ahead and bring the code back over and, and continue reading. So we can see that what we have is the tread shall be projected such that the total of the tread depth, which is that minimum five inches, plus the nosing projection is not less than eight and a half inches. So basically what we need is to have a complete tread depth, including the nosing and everything, that is not less than eight and a half inches. So with that said, that is basically saying that, yeah, we have a minimum tread depth of five inches, but what's different and what is basically additional and to that, the total tread depth cannot be less than eight and a half inches. So 
uh, what is that really saying? That's saying that the nosing is kind of a minimum. If we're looking at the complete minimums, that would be a minimum nosing of three and a half inches, which means the overlap between where that riser is and the nosing projection ends. I can show you this in section when we get there in just a second, but just kind of know we have a minimum tread depth of five inches, which means that we're to receive this minimum total tread depth of eight and a half inches, we'd have to have a nosing projection of three and a half inches. So the nice thing about that, we could have no nosing projection, but make sure that we have a total tread depth of eight and a half inches. So there's a lot of ways you can get around that. Obviously, if you have no nosing, then we're basically projecting the start the stair further. And so again, I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Uh, but the final thing that we want to look at as far as actual code item is the riser height shall not be more than nine and a half inches. So that's great to know. Obviously, we need to know that for the stair, but this differs significantly from a traditional egress stair because those are more likely to be seven inches or less. So that's really important to be aware of. We have more flexibility here, which is hence why we are wanting to use this type of ladder. So we're going to take that nine and a half inch riser maximum come back over to Revit and we can see that we have this right here, maximum riser height, currently seven inches. Obviously we don't want that, but what we do want is to set this maximum riser height again to the code value of nine and a half inches. Okay, great. So, all right, this is good. Basically we have inputted everything as far as the true requirements to the stairs. So let's go ahead and accept this and we can see, <laughs> obviously we have an error. We'll worry about that later. But the nice thing is right here, we have our ship's ladder. This is kind of the, the base dimensions, the minimum dimensions and everything that we would need. Now we can make a lot of tweaks to this, which is what it, I want to do exactly. So let's go over here and I'm gonna draw a section so we can actually look through this and start to explain this a little bit better because that's quite important. Let's go ahead and go to our view. Okay, so what we're looking at is some of these dimensions here. Let's go ahead and make these. We can see right there we have our riser, which is nine inches. Obviously it's not nine and a half inches or more, which is great. And here we have our, I'm going to change the scale so we could look at this a little better, maybe three quarters, okay? So zoom in in here, we can really see this quite well. So then we have our tread depth, which is from there to there, and that happens to be 11 inches still. That's not a big deal. But then our nosing projection, obviously, I don't like this profile. You can change it. That We'll get to that in just a second. But this dimension is our nosing projection. And so we have basically that 11 inches plus the one inch. And that gives us a total tread depth currently, currently, of one foot or 12 inches. Now, this is not quite a traditional ship's ladder in a sense that you would normally see because these dimensions are going to be slightly different. And let's go ahead and change those now. So I can click on the stair and we can see our actual tread depth here is 11 inches. And obviously we can see it right there as 11 inches. So this is where we'd start to get into some of the details of you know, what we want this to be. And before I change that, I do want to come back to the type and I want to show you some of these nosing, the things that we can change with the nosing. So we can see here the run type is, again, this is a default. The run type is two inches tread, one inch nosing, quarter inch riser. So that's all very important, but this is basically pulling from the profile that we would typically see, the whole tread, in fact. So we can come in here and again, lots of different settings, lots of these settings I covered in previous stair videos. I've got a complete stair playlist, so go check that out for sure. But we can start to see some of the things that we want to include or not include in this ship ladder. And so first of all, risers, if we're trying to save costs and time, construction, anything like that, you may not want the riser. Obviously, there's an aesthetic look there. And typically speaking, when it comes to egress, you would have to have a riser for an egress stair. Now, this is a different type of stair, which is great. Obviously, it's shipped ladder, but we don't necessarily need to have risers. So, for example, if we didn't want to have them, simply uncheck it, and that is the way to go. So, if I hit apply, and we're going to come back here, obviously, these dimensions are going to get blown. We can see, yep, our risers are gone. We don't have any riser there, but we still do have our treads, and that's really what we're going to pay attention to now because that's that's what we want to change. Now, I will say, we are within the family, the system family, type being the two-inch tread, whatever, that is something you probably want to duplicate. Obviously, there's another one in here by default. You may or may not like that one, but for the sake of this, I'm going to add my riser back. I'm going to duplicate this. And again, name it what you want. This is this is not the best naming convention for this, but nonetheless, I would want to come back here and probably add the dimensions that we end up going with, but this is fine for now. But again, I want to uncheck the risers and the thread thickness. Maybe I want this to be two inches, maybe not. My thought 
in basically what I'm designing is it, it probably makes more sense that this is a two by piece of wood. And if that's the case, then that's going to be an inch and a half. And the tread profile, again, is by default. I've got other profiles that I could load in here, stair tread, whatever it ends up being. Not so worried about that right now, but you can see here the nosing length is one inches. And so that, that will be that one inch projection beyond the actual tread depth that we set later. So there's my 11 inches. And if I come back in here, there's my one inch nosing depth. And I don't want to change that right now. It's going to change based on the profile, which is my profile right there. I'm going to go ahead and set this to default and see what the default is. And the default apparently is nothing, which is great. That's exactly what I want to see. But if I come back in here, I can see there is my total tread depth of one foot still. But the main thing here is that we can see right there, there's my one inch, that one inch being the projection of my nosing. And so that's all within the dimensions of that particular run type right here. And I still have that one inch set. So what the code is saying, again, if we look at it one more time, that my actual tread depth right here, plus my nosing can be no less than eight and a half inches. So basically I need to put these two together and create that value that is at least eight and a half inches. Now I can do that any number of ways. Obviously it's going to change based on the design that you want, but the greater the projection, the tighter the stair is from an overall depth standpoint, which is obviously something you might want, but just know that clearly I need to have that actual tread depth of five inches at least. So what I think what I might do is I think five inches is a bit small, so I might push that more towards six inches. So that would allow us to go to a nosing, nosing length of two and a half inches. That's great. My tread thickness will maintain. So this is all great. Obviously, I'll come back and add a material that's not quite that important right now. That's good. So I hit OK, hit OK one more time. And obviously, we could see that there is our projection there of two and a half inches. We need to edit the actual tread depth from 11 inches down to, let's say, six inches. This is something that I like a bit more. And obviously, things are going to move. And you can clearly see now this is looking more like what I would expect to see from a ship's ladder. And obviously, there's my projection still there. It's two and a half inches, and my total is eight and a half. Now, maybe I want to push this more to nine because, again, eight and a half is the minimum. Not always the best idea to hit a minimum, but you can start to see I'm going to have to come up and around. It's more a typical thing you'd see with anything like a ladder. So maybe for this, we'll do six and a half inches, which would put our total tread depth at nine inches. Maybe that feels a bit more comfortable. Maybe, maybe not. So that's great. So looking at this now, we are less than our code maximum of nine and a half inches in riser height. We have our total tread depth that includes the projection of at least eight and a half inches. So that's great. We basically have created our ship's ladder that is acceptable to code. Now we can save a completely separate video for handrails. For what we're looking at, handrails would just need to be your basic 30 inches, between 30 and 34 inches. It's continuous. All of that doesn't change. But something I'm not going to do in this video that you would probably want to do is change these supports and because it just it doesn't look right obviously you can you can change the way those supports work with the dimensions and the, the stair type that isn't a huge deal but what i want to do now is actually let's go to plan and i'm going to create a similar stair and i just want to put in a landing and we can work with the landing all right so there's that and we draw this here cool so now we have a shift ladder um, that will also have a landing and let's go here back to 3d and we can see that, yeah, it's great because it's it's carrying all the information that we had before. We've got the landing there and it's perfect. Now, the thing that I don't necessarily like is that my width is really wide. I don't need it to be this wide. I only need 20 inches minimum. So I can come back in here and edit type. And if I wanted to hit a minimum run width of 20 inches, I can put it right there. So let's go ahead and do that. 20 inches. And we can see that this is not going to change, obviously, but if I come into my stair, I can click on these runs and change my actual run width to 20 inches. Let's say maybe 24 inches is more comfortable. Obviously, if we're trying to traverse this, 24 inches. Now, we have those runs. These look really good, but the landing does not need to be this big. The, the landing code applies all the same to a ship ladder as it would a regular egress stair. Basically, the perpendicular width of the landing that you're standing on cannot be less than the width that you would traverse going on a stair run, whether that's a ship ladder, egress stair, doesn't matter. So basically this needs to be 24 inches if I'm going to have these run widths be 24 inches. It's as simple as that, but I can't go less than that. That's really the point here. So that's something to be aware of. And a lot of times what I would want to do if I come across something like this is I can simply delete this. And so I have these two runs and then I can go to landing and click each one of these runs. And now I have this 24 inch landing. 
And that's great. Now, obviously, I probably want to tighten this up and change this up a bit, but I'll leave that up to you. That's not hard to do at all. But the, the great thing is it's done, and I don't like these supports and how they, they're built. This, these look really funky. In the end, this is not quite the way you'd want it to look. It's my guess. But from a code value, code standpoint, and checking all those boxes, besides putting a continuous handrail on this this thing, we're, we're good to go. So I really like this, and I hope you're able to learn how to quickly take the generic stare that you, you get out of Revit and really edit it in any way that you need. Obviously, this is particularly for a ship ladder, particularly the IRC, the International Residential Code version of this. There's also an OSHA version, which is less stringent. That's kind of the way OSHA works, but we would need to use the residential code version if we're going to put this in any residence. That's kind of the whole point here. So you can take this if you want. Once I'm done editing this and I have all the supports kind of looking more pretty, I guess you could say, I will save this Revit model. And because it's a system family, and I would have to save it as a Revit file, a true Revit file, not a family. I'll save that file in my school community so you can access that there, download it for free, not a big deal. Again, you can check the link to the school community down in the description below. It's the first link you'll find. You can join for free, looking to grow that for sure and help you out even more. But that will do it for this video. We looked at, again, taking that basic Revit stare and, and editing it in a code compliant way to get a ship ladder in the end, which is great. So if you any point in this video you happen to learn something please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot also do consider subscribing that helps me out quite a lot too so i will see you in the next video have a wonderful day thanks so much for watching